welcome to the Rock Your Dream Body and Dream Life interview series. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Kat Kim. So to tell you a little bit about Kat Kim, she is a speaker, co-author, and teacher of human potential, spirituality, and mindset. She is a confidence coach and a healer, and is coached on set such as, or on sets such as Dwayne the, the Rock Johnson's motivational reality TV show called Wake Up Call. Formerly a convicted drug felon facing up to three years in state prison, Kat is now helping people around the world harness their spiritual powers to achieve their biggest dreams. So welcome, Kat. Hi, Sheila. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is going to be a really good conversation. Yeah. I can already feel it. I'm listening to you read my own bio and I'm like, wow, three years. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm sure we'll touch on that. Yeah. But um, so why don't we just start out by talking about like how I know you have quite a journey, both in terms of rocking your dream body and your dream life. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that journey um, of getting there by, by yeah. your definition? Sure. Um, well, all of this kind of started, I think, when I was six years old, when my mother started feeding me diet pills. And I don't remember if this is something I had asked her to help me do, like help me lose weight, mom, or if this is something that she wanted me to do, but it really doesn't matter, right? Um, I just remember being barely able to reach over the countertop and I had my hands up and I was looking up and she would take these um, diet pills and they were from China actually, and she would be cutting them in half. And I would ask her, why are you cutting those in half? Why are you cutting that? And she said, well, these are for adults. And since you're a child, um, you're only going to have to take half of it. And so I just, I just took it. And, and I think, you know, since that's my earliest memory, I, I really do believe that was kind of the beginning of a lifelong struggle of self-image issues, confidence, um, body issues, all of that. Yeah. And of course, um, I grew up in a very um, abusive environment at home. And one thing led to another. I started rebelling really at a young age. And I started drinking at, and smoking and doing um, smoking pot when I was 13. And then by the time I was 16, I started doing hardcore drugs. And then uh, by the time I was 18, I was dealing. I was dealing cocaine. And um, one fateful day, I mean, I was so crazy. <laughs> I can't even believe it sometimes when I share this story. <laughs> I was um, transporting cocaine from Washington State to California. And one day I um, got off the plane in California, and this was Oakland, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oakland, California. And, you know, really, really long story short, I got caught and um, I went to jail and in Oakland, California. <laughs> and, you know, you would think that. Um, something like that would wake me up, right? Like I would be like, oh my God, this is, I've got to change my life. I've got to do something. But, but I cared so little about myself and my health and my body that I didn't care at all what was happening with me. And in fact, while I was in jail, I was like still trying to make deals because mm -hmm. I just was not aware of what was going on. And more importantly, I didn't care at all. And so, um, one thing led to another. I eventually got out of jail. And the thing, though, is this entire time, I really, really struggled with my weight and the way I looked. And I hid um, beneath really, really baggy clothes, and I never did makeup. And I was just walking around like I was the ugliest, meanest girl around. I mean, and I was. I was such a bitch. It was horrible. I was mean to other people. I was mean to myself. And as you know, when you put that energy out there, that's what you're going to get back from you, from the world around you. So I continually um, put that energy out there. I, I continually told that story and I continually received information that validated all of my beliefs to be true, that I was indeed ugly. I was fat. I was unworthy. I was unworthy of, you know, my dreams. I was unworthy of healthy relationships all of the above. And um, eventually I cleaned up. Okay. I, I, like I said, I got out of jail and I actually went to rehab and I cleaned up. I stopped the drugs and I just stopped the drinking. But um, this, this core insecurity that I, that, that I lived with since I was a child, that 
continue to exist. And this evolved into um, getting into really toxic relationships with abusive, emotionally abusive men. Mm. And so um, of all of those things, that was really the hardest for me, you know, being in a relationship with someone that you think you love and they are ridiculing, ridiculing your dreams and just putting you down. Um, and it wasn't really until one day, and this was like, I got, I had become super depressed by this point and very overweight. Um, and I was in an abusive relationship, emotionally abusive relationship. And I was walking down um, my apartment hallway to the elevator and across from the elevator door, there's this really big mirror. Um, and I was walking to the elevator and as I, as I was crossing the mirror, I caught a glimpse of a woman and she was, um, she was overweight. She had really, really bad cystic acne and she looked really depressed. And even in all of my depression and self-hatred, I looked at her and I was like, oh my God, at least I'm not that bad, you know? And of course, lo and behold, I realized in that moment that I was looking at myself. Mm. I had become so disconnected from who I am and who I wanted to be as a woman and how I was actually living my life at that moment that I didn't recognize myself in the mirror when I saw myself. And that was the moment. That was the moment. It wasn't the drugs. It wasn't the jail. It wasn't the boyfriend. It was that moment when I didn't see myself that I realized um, and I made a decision that I would do whatever it takes to become the woman that I wanted to be. I wanted to be beautiful. I wanted to be sexy. You know, I wanted to walk into a room and have people notice me. I didn't want to be an invisible person anymore. No one remembers me from like junior high or high school. Like no guys will ever remember who I am. <laughs> but, um, I wanted to not just walk into a room and people have people notice me for what I look like, but I, I wanted to have that presence mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to be somebody who's doing something in the world. And as I stepped onto the elevator, and this is kind of dramatic, but as the elevator door was closing and I was looking at myself in the mirror, I was like, this is it. This is the last time. Yeah. <laughs> and it really was. I, I came back home that day and I sat down and I wrote down my new story for how I wanted to be and live as a woman. And mm -hmm. it was all those things. I wanted to be um, alive and sexy, you know, I, I, I felt like it was so shameful to be sexy or to even want to be sexy, you know, and, um, you know, there's all that stigma around that. Um, and, and I wrote this very um, specific vision down. And after that, I really like, I did everything. I studied everything under the sun to make this happen. And this is, I became an, a certified image consultant, right? So I learned about body image and style and colors and um, skin color and uh, just everything, um, sh um, style and all of that to figure out how to change myself on the outside. And that led me into um, life coaching because I want to understand how the mindset works, you know, the psychology of our mind and why do we behave in such, in such a way. And this led me deeper and deeper. Then I became a personal trainer because I wanted to understand what the body, what the physical body goes through to undergo transformation, as you know. And um, interestingly, this, this quest for transformation on the outside just kept me, go, kept me, take, kept taking me deeper and deeper. And it led me, into this world of spirituality. And I became, I just became obsessed about learning about spiritual laws and, you know, the law of attraction and law of compensation, all of these things. Like I wanted to know how does change really happen? How do we really create? And, um, and now I'm on the path of, I can't say it. I can't believe I'm going to say it. So I'm going to say it. I am on the path of ministry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's oh my God. God. <laughs> I still can't believe it. It's, it feels so awkward coming out of my mouth, but, um, this is not about like Bible thumping at all. This is about the truth that I'm seeking about who we really are, where we come from and the power, the real power that we have to create what we're supposed to create, not what we want to create. I think this is where people get confused. 
because we all see images in magazines. We see um, beautiful women that are shaped a certain way. We see um, very successful entrepreneurs that are making six figures, seven figures, eight figures. And we think that that's what we're supposed to do. And we strive to do that. And not that we can't have those things, but there's a deeper purpose for all of those things. And that's, that's where we really need to connect with when it comes to real drastic um, and lasting transformation. Mm. That's yeah. so good. I mean, so there, there's so many layers to what you just said. So I guess I'm going to try to go through them like one by one. <laughs> sure. So when it comes to transformation and especially like, you know, for women, when we want to change the way that we look because we believe it will help us to feel the way we want to feel. Yeah. It's almost like there's layers of stuff that we pick up over time. Like when we're younger, like you were saying, you know, taking the diet pills, like feeling yeah. like I'm not good enough. And then maybe the next layer is you learn, you know, for a lot of women that I work with, they learn that it's shameful to be beautiful. Yes. So that, you know, I will receive unwanted attention. So then that's a layer. So there's all these layers that block us from getting those results or being able to achieve it because we just sabotage ourselves. Totally. Totally. We are, we are conditioned through our upbringing, through our environment, through the media, movies, TV, web, magazines, um, through religion, through education, even through mm -hmm. our government, everything that is outside of us is information that we're consuming and we're constantly being conditioned to think or believe that there is only one way to be beautiful or one way to be successful. And me growing up, I, th I just thought, okay, if I'm not tall, skinny, and blonde, because that's what all I saw in the magazines, um, then I can't be beautiful. And there's nothing about me that's tall, skinny, and blonde <laughs> yeah. at all. And so I, I gave up on that. Mm -hmm. I, I truly, Sheila, believe that I could never be a beautiful person. And so I didn't even try. I didn't try to figure out what part of my body or my facial features I should, you know, enhance or how to wear my clothes or what colors to wear or how to do my hair. I mean, I walked around like a dude. <laughs> I really did. Because you're probably trying to block all attention, right? You just didn't want it. You didn't feel no, deserving. I didn't, I didn't believe I could be anything other than mm. fat and ugly, actually. Mm. That's, and that was the real truth. And I lived that and I breathed that and I acted like that. And yeah. I attracted everything that validated that I was fat and ugly. And, and that's from the conditioning that you're talking about. We're layers and layers and layers of conditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I walked into my apartment building this morning because I, I actually I went and got my workout in early this morning, wanted to move because I had a lot going on today. And I walked in and there was two magazines, like a Star magazine and then, I don't know, whatever, Us Weekly. And they were like, you know, delivered for someone here. And on the cover of both was like how Kate got skinny and like top tips for the bikini season from celebrities or something. And I was looking at that thinking like, this is really what news is like this is what we see at grocery stores even little kids like little girls are looking at these magazines and of course like they can't always read yet from the get-go but like it's everywhere you know yeah. totally you make such a good point that's what is newsworthy that is what is important and that is what is being conditioned in our mind every single day, thousands of times per day. And so no wonder why we grow up having these problems and being obsessed about our weight and our body and focusing on all those parts that we don't like. Because what does it say in the magazines? Like the, the top headlines are always like how to um, get a flat belly in, you know, I don't know, whatever it says, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't read those things anymore. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but but when, it's, when it's something that's newsworthy, that's continually put into our media, that's what we grow up thinking that is important. And that's yeah. the point that you're making, actually, because because then what about all the other stuff that's really important, mm -hmm. like um, our education or um, creating relationships or love or intimacy or, or the values that really actually make us mm -hmm. truly beautiful? Creativity, being yes. inspired, yeah. Yes, expression, um, communication, all of those things. 
Mm-hmm. Are those are why is that not newsworthy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why is it newsworthy that someone lost such amount of weight in such in, in you know in such amount of weeks? Yeah. Crazy. I think so you touched on it a little bit like when we see celebrities or we see other people that have all of these material type things or again like you know they look a certain way that we think we should look in order to be beautiful. I think that we look to these people who seem to have, like on paper, it looks like their life is amazing. That's why when they fall off the pedestal and they have, you know, relationship issues, that's when it's even more newsworthy because then people are even more interested because they're like, oh my God, if they have problems, then I'm not so bad. But I think that when we look at these people, we think if I achieve what they achieve, I'm going to be happy because they look happy or, you know, money makes everything easier. And I think in some cases it does, but it's not like we don't really want what they want. We want our version of our own story. And if we can put our focus there, it's so much more empowering. Yes. Yes. Well, if you're working with a woman who's like, gosh, I love what you're saying. I want to have that level of confidence. I'm going to shut my window. <laughs> I want to have that level of confidence. I want to feel that way, but I, it's been so long since I felt that way. I don't even yeah. know where to begin. Yeah. yeah. What, what would you say? Such a good question. And this is where we actually begin because, um, again, because we are so conditioned to focus on what's outside of us mm-hmm. and other people and how they're doing that, we, we aren't trained to think about what we really want. We are not taught to think about what is truly important to me in this life, in this lifetime as I'm living. What do I really want to do? How do I want to be of service? How do I want to feel every single day? What qualities of life do I want to exude? Um, and those are the kind of the questions that I start probing them with. because. Now we're going into their true essence, who they really are at their core, and drawing that out. And that's who you are on the inside, not how you look on the outside. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some people call it values, right? I like to call them God qualities because you can call it God or spirit or universe, it doesn't matter. But for me, the way I like to believe it is that there's, um, there's a specific way that spirit source wants to express through me Mm -hmm. and it's going to be different from the way it expresses through you and Mary and Beth and John, etc. There's a really, really specific way. And when I tap into that and I become really intimate with what that is, wow, (laughs) then I have the universe and the spirit moving me, doing all the hard work for me then it's spirit expressing through me, right? Mm -hmm. But if I shut down, if I shut that down, I don't even think about what that is. And I try to manipulate my entire life, manipulate my body (laughs) to be or look like somebody else, then I'm shutting down the source of all power, of all intelligence, of all love. And Mm -hmm. that's where you get people who are so miserable. I know this because I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. And for women who, because I I mean, I've had, this is part of what I do too, is like we start out talking about health, but ultimately the conversation goes to this idea of living your purpose, whatever that means to you as an individual. And sometimes they'll say, like women will tell me, well, there are already so many women doing what I want to do. Like what makes me different? How do I know that I have something unique to share? How do you, how do you take that conversation to a place where they suddenly start to see that, oh, I actually really have this value that's totally unique and different from anyone else? Yeah, totally. Such a good question. Um, Again, I draw them to their, their awareness to the fact that they are once again, looking outside of them. They are comparing themselves to um, people around them. And that's the conditioning. That's what we've been taught to do. Hey, look at me. I'm fabulous. Here's, you know, spend $30 a month. You can be like me. That's kind of the, um, the culture that we're in, right? Mm-hmm. So what I do is I help them to kind of recondition their mind to, to start looking um, at themselves, start looking inwards again. And it's a practice. That's what a spiritual practice is. It's, a, it's something that you do consistently little by little every single day it doesn't happen overnight 
but our habit of constantly looking at other people and comparing ourselves to them is really, really ingrained in us. So to, to answer your question, it's more for me, it's about um, helping them to break that habit a little bit, little yeah. by little, little by little. And when they really begin to tap into who they really are and feel the uniqueness, the, the power starts to be, starts to generate. Because like I said, there is a specific way that source or spirit wants to express through you. And when you tap into that, you begin to feel that power, you know, you begin to feel it and you feel alive and you feel more confident. And that's where I'm, I try to lead people to. It's almost like a light switch. Like when you flip that switch on, which maybe for whatever reason you've flipped it off for a long time, yeah. you start to feel what that feels like to let that, that it's almost like I, I describe it as like love and it's like flowing in and out and through and everywhere. And it's not conditional. It's not like I have to say the right thing or do the right thing. It's just flowing and whatever happens, happens and it's perfect and it's okay. And the more you can be in that space, the more that's when your creativity flows through opportunities yeah. come to you. It's like things just, you're in the flow. You really are. Totally. It's so true. And I want to be really, um, I want to be really clear that what I'm saying is that what I'm not saying is that you can't have what you want physically and materially, because those things are all possible. In fact, we all have a desire, a really, really strong burning desire within us that's planted through spirit, through source. And so those things that we are wanting are things that we can all have and we should have. But more importantly, it's, it's important to figure out why. Why should you have those things? And what are you going to do with those things? How are you going to be of service when you have those things? Then you're connecting to the bigger purpose of it. Yes. If you're healthy, if you have a rocking body, a rocking life, a rocking you know, um, business, what, what are you going to do with that? Mm -hmm. How will you serve the people around you? And I think that's the key. That's the bigger reason. Yeah. So yesterday I went and got a haircut and I got my eyebrows done and my eyebrow stylist, she yeah. said something that I thought was brilliant because yeah. we were talking about um, like women who, you know, spend time on their makeup and get their eyelashes done and like all of these things. And she was like, I don't see why people say that that means that they have self-esteem issues. She's like, I honestly believe that women who invest in themselves and and, you know, do those things of self-care that make them feel really beautiful. Yeah. It's like they value themselves. They're investing yes. in themselves because they value themselves. I'm like, girl, that yeah. was good. <laughs> it's so true though, right? Like when you invest in yourself, it's like you're putting yourself on the list of priorities. Absolutely. You're taking care of yourself. And that was one of the ways that spirit wanted to express through me beauty that I shut down for, you know, over two decades. And because I shut that down, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't get haircuts. I didn't do any of that. Um, but now I know that those things are essential to my life. I don't care how much it is, any of that. I'm going to get, I'm going to take care of myself because when I don't, my life falls apart, mm -hmm. hands down every single time. When I'm not taking care of my health, when I'm not working out, when I'm not feeling alive and fit, my entire life just, it, it just falls apart. And so I know that for me, I must do that. That's, it's a, it's a, it's a priority. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're allowing yourself to be that vessel. Like when you feel empowered, when you feel beautiful, when you are working on these things, like, you know, you, maybe you have specific physical goals that you set, but you've set them from a place of self-discovery and self-love yeah. versus from a place of not good enoughness then that's where you're again, opening yourself up to shine. You're investing time in yourself. You're saying like, I am a priority. And then that's when everything else starts to come into alignment as well. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, again, that's the key. When you align from the inside, then all that outside stuff begins to align as well. Like the fitness or the diet, you know, if we focus too much on calorie counting and how many push-ups we do, um, without really understanding why we're doing it, then it becomes a, then it becomes a something that we don't want to do. 
right? But if, we, if we're more, if we're setting our intention to understand our purpose and align with that from a higher level, then all these things become easy. It becomes easier to work out. It becomes easier to eat healthy. Yeah. And that's the, that's the misconception for me. I'm on this big mission now to like teach people that we have been lied to. <laughs> it does not have to be hard. It does yeah. not have to be hard. We have the power of the universe backing us. Are you kidding me? That's like the most extraordinary thing ever. We need to learn how to leverage that and use that mm -hmm. and make things easy <laughs> and delegate the hard shit to, to our higher power. Yeah. And, and, and when we don't do that, when, we're tr when we don't do that, we're trying to do everything by ourselves. And that's when things become hard. It does not have to be hard at all. I think I just realized what is like the theme throughout every one of these interviews. It's and I, what, it's the spirituality part. It's this connection yeah. to that higher source that I think has been missing or is missing for a lot of people when they try to just do it all themselves. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. give me the action list. I'm going to go into masculine mode and like make this shit happen. Yeah. Versus leaning back and knowing like, yes, okay, I have support. Yes. I have like troops. I have, you know, my fairies of the universe or God, whatever yes. that, like whatever that is that you call it. Yep. We have that too. And we forget, we just chop that off and we, you know, disconnect from it. So true, Sheila. And that should <laughs> actually be the first thing that we connect with yeah. that power that it's like, um, I think when, when we were talking, what, what analogy did I do? It's just like, it's like our, our iPhone plug, right? When we charge it, we never forget to charge our phone. We're, <laughs> yeah. We're make sure our phone is charged. No yeah. Matter right so we're gonna plug that in every single day <laughs> because that's where the power source comes from oh my god that's so good right but yeah. us our power source comes from from spirit universe god um father mother god whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. and if we don't charge ourselves where is that power going to come from we're tr then we try to generate it and then life becomes hard it's so yeah. important to plug in plug in plug in like every single day. And that's what we call a spiritual practice, mm -hmm. 10 minutes a day even. So, and I know like spiritual practice has different definition or meaning to everyone, but like, what are some of the ways again, for, for a woman who's a busy corporate woman or a mom who's trying to handle the household and the kids and everything else, what are some of your favorite ways to suggest that they can like start some sort of practice for themselves? Yeah, I think, First and foremost, it's important to realize why it's important. Otherwise, it becomes a, another item on the to-do list. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, I got to meditate for five minutes. Oh my God, I didn't do it. Oh, I'm never going to get it. I'm, something's wrong with me. But again, if you really take into consideration that you've got to plug in and charge, you are an iPhone, people. <laughs> And you need to be charged every single day. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to run out of juice. When you take it from that point of view, then it, it becomes a priority, something that you do. And everyone is different where they are in their spiritual path. And, like, and you're, you're right about how um, people have different ways. My suggestion always is to make it easy. <laughs> Again, make it easy. If you're just starting out, shut down for, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes. If you have kids, oh my God, how hard is that, right? So maybe even two minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't, whatever seems easy for you to do in that moment. How, what, is, um, what does Abraham say? The next logical step, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right? So find the next easy logical step. You don't have to go into meditation for 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, a day right right off the bat find what's easy mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's the same with working out right That's like exactly yeah. yeah I was gonna say that too like whether whatever I'm not gonna expect you to go from zero to 60 with your workouts and with your nutrition that's why I incorporate a nutrition plan like I have a nutrition line that I use with my clients because it makes it very easy it's like once you once you have something that you can say, okay, this works and this I'm, I'm winning. Like at least I did that today. Yeah. Then it releases that resistance. It, it, you know, that you have when you feel like I'm not doing it good enough. Cause that's usually the mindset that we're spinning in. 
And it gets you into that alignment where you can allow yourself to make even more positive decisions because you feel like you're doing well and you're making progress. Exactly. Totally. So any sort of step forward, any sort of thing that helps you to get into that mode of like, I'm winning, then you're going to do even more things from there. Right. Because you're putting the energy. So the way that we communicate to the universe is not through our words. It's through our feelings, through our emotions. And when we have that feeling of, oh, wow, I, I, I succeeded today. Yeah. I completed this thing today. I did something today. So then that's the message that we're sending out. And then we will receive more of that same energy. Mm-hmm. So it's really important, even if it's little tiny wins, to, to um, be aware of when you have them and, and acknowledge it and savor those moments, no matter how small, no matter yeah. how small they are. And not everything works for everyone. I think that's the thing. Like you have this tool belt of things you can use. You can use for nutrition. There's different options for um, tapping in, tuning in. Like you have meditation. You can literally, if you wake up and you said five things that you appreciate for the day, that's a win, you know? So you don't have to be hard on yourself. Like, well, I have to do it this way. And if I don't do it that way, it's wrong. It's like, no, what feels good for you right now? So you can start really creating that positive momentum. Yep, exactly. And to always remember, it's, it's important because you've got to charge like an yeah. iPhone. You've, you've got to recharge your phone. You've got to recharge your energy. And um, another thing I tell them, Sheila, though, is if, if they're really struggling with that, and if I feel that adding a practice like that is making them um, overwhelmed, then, then what I have them do is actually um, the practice is to begin taking things off their to-do list. Mm. That's what I have them at, do as their, their spiritual practice. If they're feeling overwhelmed, I ask them, what's one thing you can just take off your list for now? You can come back to it. You can add it on later. But what can you take off for now? Yeah. I think that spills over into confidence too, right? Because when you constantly feel like you're not getting everything done, you feel like you're not winning. Like, you know, and but when you do, if say you have three things on your list that are your top priorities for the day, you get those done, then you have, you're building that confidence in yourself. Yeah, exactly. And again, we are conditioned over and over to think and believe that we need to be like superhumans. You know, you see the, ma- the magazine, Super Mom, how this model <laughs> does this and runs a multi-million dollar business and lost 20 pounds and da, 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 da. Like, stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we think that we have to be constantly on the go and doing, doing, doing. Mm-hmm. And that's simply not the case. It's not about doing. It truly, truly is about being. Yeah. In order to manifest your rocking body, your rocking life, it's first and foremost about, first and foremost about being that, not doing things to get there, but being that person right here, right now. Mm-hmm. right here right now <laughs> and like over and over have you read the desire map um i have yeah uh-huh it's kind of the same thing where you decide like okay so what are those things going to help me to feel like yeah. really what is it that i'm trying to feel and when yeah. you determine that yeah then you can start to design your life around feeling that way right now while right. you're on your way to wherever you're going yeah exactly So what are some other ways when it comes to confidence, like building confidence right now? um, What are some of your go-to tips for women? Um, Good question. Around, um, it always comes back to connecting with source and really, really becoming intimate with source, with spirit, knowing how this massive, infinite, power and intelligence wants to express through you because when you get connected with that and you become intimate with that you're like wow there's nothing else I would want to be Mm -hmm. this is who I am and it feels so good and the more you allow yourself to embrace that and embody that you walk like that, you know, yeah. you walk with the universe behind you and that is confidence. No yeah. matter what size you are, or what you look like, that is the energy of the universe behind you. And that is attractive, right? I was going to say, so I've noticed, I believe that beauty is really about energy 
And so I, a lot of times it's like when we're all up in our head, you know, when we're thinking, 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 we're not really managing or, 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 um, I don't know, expanding our energy. But when we get into our body, when we do these practices that help us to connect with that source energy or that part of us ourselves, that's our spiritual side. Yeah. It expands our energy. And when you walk out into the world with your energy, you know, like full yeah. bloom, you know, walking with just feeling like you're expressing love and yeah. you're glowing. Yeah. That's, that's what's attractive. I think that's totally what's attractive. And the thing that, so again, we've been conditioned again to think that attractiveness has to do with our physical appearance and our physical appearance alone. But Actually, when we see when we see when when we meet another human being, there are many things that are happening. We're processing several things at once. We're processing yes, their appearance, but we're also pro processing um, their body language and their behavior and their communication. And these are can be as tiny, tiny movements in their forehead or in their eyes or in their smile. Um, all of that we're, it, we some people call it intuition. You can call it science that's how we communicate not just with our appearance alone so when you are when you are thinking about how much life sucks and you know why are my thighs touching and how come i ate that chocolate cake that energy comes through through a little tiny movement in your mouth you know mm -hmm. or a lack of like um, sparkle in your eye mm -hmm. and and people intuitively at their gut level um they pick that up yeah get up but if you're if you are just you know in the moment and you're just thinking about wow i've got the universe inside of me right now moving me it's in my blood it's in my veins it's in my muscles i feel so good walking down the street this 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 air feels good on my skin i feel so blessed to be doing what i'm doing yeah. And that, you know, that energy just exudes and people, again, they pick up on that mm -hmm. automatically without you saying one word, people will pick up on it. Yeah. yeah. It's true. If you, I mean, it's almost like a fun experiment to just say, okay, so yeah, I know, you know, meditation, whatever is important, but I'm going to do it just to see what happens this week. You know, if that's what gets you to do it, like if yeah. that's your thing to get you started, then do that. But you're going to notice like, yes, people will respond to you differently. Once you start working on the energetic side of things. And really what that is, is like leaning back into your feminine, getting into that receiving mode. I, I mean, that's another thing that's been coming up a lot in a, these interviews is this, this idea of the feminine, like receiving. We don't allow ourselves to receive. We don't feel worthy of receiving. And the more you open yourself up, yeah. the more you will receive. Absolutely, absolutely. And just um, a side note here, the law, the law of attraction is mm -hmm. a feminine energy. Hmm. It is hmm. a receptive yeah. energy. And what we command into the law is more of a masculine energy. So it's mm. pointing something or we're commanding, we're putting forth some word or desire. And then the law is feminine and it receives. Mm. Always, always receiving. Without, the law receives without any discrimination. It doesn't matter what you're commanding into it. It just simply receives. And then what comes out of that is the creation or the form. Yeah. So that's a, that's a whole deep topic. I mean, there's so much to the law of attraction and I think yeah. most people have a, a basic understanding of it, but once you really get that, like being in the receiving mode, almost like, you know, a transistor radio, like just putting yourself in that vibe on that wavelength of receiving yes. all of these really amazing things. You, you notice it, you notice it in the conversations you have and the people you attract, yeah. you notice it in the things that you see when you look around the world. You know, yeah. you see abundance versus lack and it all has to do with you, like what, you know, your focus is on. Yeah. And what you're willing to receive that yeah. it's totally what you receive right now is what you are allowing yourself to receive mm -hmm. is the, the, you've, you've put a cap on it. Yeah. You know, we, all, we all do that. Whether we're, whether we feel like we're successful or not, we all have a cap on what we're willing and able um, to believe that we can receive. 
but the whole journey is about learning to open that up even more and to receive even more and to command things into the law and allow the law to receive it and, and allow ourselves to receive it. It's really such a beautiful thing. And the law of attraction, uh, the movie, the, the secret, you know, mm -hmm. I watched that of course, I don't know, 2007 or something. And that, of course that piqued my interest and I started reading and studying and I got into Abraham and all of that. Um, but the reason that I'm in ministry now, is because my quest for understanding this law has brought me here. <laughs> yeah. It, it's taking me to, um, to reading like these ancient texts. Like this law is not something that um, the movie, The Secret discovered. This has been, this is the law. This is the way it is. And it's in, it's everywhere. It's this, this is, it's been existing since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And this law is such a beautiful thing. It just receives our command. That's it. I was gonna. I was just gonna say. Have you read the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It? Mm -hmm. That's uh, Florence Scovel Shin. Yeah, and that was really good too. She goes into like the Bible and she explains oh, cool. the Bible and like yeah. what her interpretation of it is and um, same thing. Like you know, it, like looking at it from the sort of law of of um, reciprocity, law of attraction, that kind of a perspective. So yeah, very cool. I'll have to yeah. check that out. Yeah. I love, I love that stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, this interview, I feel like it went by so fast, but I just want to make sure we covered everything. Like, was there anything that we didn't talk about today that you feel like you wanted to make sure that we shared? Um, you know, I guess just to, I think the fine, just to wrap this up and the real, the main point of all of this, because, um, we've been talking about the law and that it's receptive, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest point out of all of this, I think is that because the law is receptive, it is waiting for us. It is waiting for our command. Mm. It is waiting for us to put something into the law and Actually, we've always been putting things into the law. And what that is, is what you see around you. That's what you've been putting into the law. So if you don't have money, if you're not healthy, if you're, if you're miserable, that's actually what you've been putting into the law. If you are healthy, you have success, that's what you've been putting into the law. But this law is waiting for us. And so the point is, is it's our, it's our job. It's our duty. It's our privilege to command things into this law, the things that we want. And, and to know how to leverage that and actually take action on that, that's such a powerful, powerful thing anyone can do. Yeah, and it's not really about, it's not something that you have to figure out. It's really about just using your attention to focus on yes. what you want, really yeah. visualizing your life the way you want it. You know being very conscious about your attention and focus and taking yeah. that time to be a deliberate creator versus just perpetuating all of the stuff. So if you have a conversation with someone, you don't have to complain about the weather. You don't have to tell that old story of the stuff that so you're true. about. You yes. can tell the story of the good things that are happening right now. You can tell the story yes. of where you're going and all of the, you know, like amazing desires that we have. And I think that's the, the biggest thing that people don't realize there's so much power in that you know, yes we don't put much of our focus there that's where all the power is yeah you know so people the thing with uh, setting intentions and goal setting is and where i think a lot of people um you know are really challenged is that they set intentions and they you know they repeat their intentions five times a day or whatever but the rest of the day they're talking about how <laughs> shitty life is right yeah so, guess what <laughs> Yeah. It's actually in those moments, every single moment that you are commanding into the law, how mm -hmm. shitty your life is. And yeah. guess what? You're going to get that shitty energy back. <laughs> yeah. So you're absolutely right. It's in those moments when you're, when you're walking um, down the street and you have a, a conversation with someone, what energy are you putting out there? Mm -hmm. What are the thoughts that you're having as you're, you know, just, you know, driving, right? That's, that's where we're commanding mm -hmm. in those moments. So well said. Oh gosh. Like mm -hmm. that's it right there. 
Yeah. So thank you so much, Kat. I really appreciate thank your you. time. And I want to know, so where, if someone wants to follow up and, you know, take this further with you, where should we send them? Yeah, sure. Um, I think there's a link, I provided a link for you guys. And what I thought I would do is offer um, a Facebook group where it's just total open um, spiritual Q&A. Like any questions that you guys have on the creative process, on the, on how spirit creates, on how you create, how you can really just take this power by the, you know, and by the reins and really do something with it. Mm -hmm. I love teaching this stuff. And I mean, there's no obligation for anything. I just want to, I just want to talk about this. (laughs) (laughs) So um, it would be a win-win for anybody who, who would like to participate in that. Thank you so much for that. And I will definitely be there as well. So I can't wait to have those conversations. Awesome. All right. Take care, girl. Thanks Thank again. You. Okay. Bye. All right. And I will see everyone else in the next interview.